Hi, everybody. Um, 25 years after the Good Friday Agreement, 20 to 40 percent of children and adults in Northern Ireland still experience paramilitary harm. And in some areas, this is double. Um, my name is Christopher, and today I'm going to talk to you about the Northern Ireland Executives Tackling Paramilitary Activity, Criminality and Organised Crime Programme. In a place with a complex history, this initiative is a bold step towards fostering lasting change. Paramilitary activity remains a significant issue for some of our most disadvantaged communities and creates major health and economic challenges. Paramilitarism has deep roots and tackling it requires a comprehensive strategy and, and the slide kind of shows what that strategy is. The program represents a multifaceted, multi-sector, trauma-informed approach addressing social, economic and political dimensions. It does this by implementing a public health approach to violence prevention and reduction contributing to the sustainable development goals. We stop the spread of violence by delivering early interventions, working with those at risk and reducing the harm already caused by supporting those who've experienced the effects of violence. We deliver collaboratively through government departments, statutory agencies and partners in the voluntary community sector, investing in over 100 evidence-based interventions. It's not just about law enforcement, it's also about empowering communities, particularly where power and paramilitary gangs are, are most active. We need to be realistic about the challenges. Paramilitarism is an embedded and pernicious issue, and breaking its hold involves confronting uncomfortable truths and changing our mental models. We focus on delivering data-driven interventions to address the threats, risks, and harms posed by paramilitaries. People we support have higher levels of exposure to paramilitary violence, traumatic experiences, and mental health conditions than the general population. Paramilitary activity is a major driver of poor health and life outcomes. A quarter of the young people we support have been intimidated by paramilitaries at age 13 on average. And our research shows that these experiences can lead to maladaptive coping mechanisms like avoidance, substance use, and even perpetrating further violence. Taking a public health approach allows us to test and learn. We have embedded action research to collect evidence on the need and efficacy and to inform both policy and practice. Our projects work, evaluation shows improved health and well-being outcomes, and significant reduction in the intention of young people to engage in violence. Paramilitary attacks on individuals have reduced by 39% in recent years, and we've supported around 900 victims of violence and thousands of those at risk. There is a moral and ethical purpose for doing this work and improving people's lives. However, we also need to make the financial case. Many of the issues that we deal with create demand for healthcare and justice services, and many of these demands are driven by the effects of trauma and exposure to violence, which have long-term negative effect effects on people's life outcomes. The cost of trauma alone in Northern Ireland has been estimated at 1.3 billion per annum, and we're currently working with economists to estimate the cost of paramilitarism. The Tackling Paramilitarism program is a practical endeavor to redefine Northern Ireland's future uh, free from the grip of paramilitary conflict. Thank you very much.